Be sure to review the cautions and warnings outlined in your pump's manual prior to installation or operation. Your pump's manual is available on All Flow's website. When you first receive your All Flow pump, inspect the box to ensure that there is no visible transit damage. Prior to installation, prepare the pump by tightening the fasteners according to the torque specifications listed in the IOM. Next, install the muffler, which must be installed to reduce sound levels. Install the pump in an accessible location to facilitate future maintenance. When possible, it's best to install the pump using the shortest pipe with the minimum number of pipe fittings. The piping should not be smaller than the connection size of the pump. When pumping liquids of higher viscosity, larger piping may be used to reduce pipe friction losses. It's recommended to use flexible hoses or connections between the pump and rigid piping to assist in minimizing pump vibration. All of the piping should be supported independently of the pump. The piping should be reinforced, non-collapsible, and capable of high vacuum service. While all pumps can pass solids, you should use a strainer on the pump's intake to ensure that the pump's rated solids capacity is not exceeded. Periodically, inspect the strainer for clogs. Clogs can lower performance and accelerate diaphragm wear. Three types of pump installation include suction lift, when the pump is installed above the fluid line. Ensure that the suction dry lift capability of the pump exceeds the height difference. Note, be sure to take the specific gravity of fluid into account. Flooded suction, when the pump is installed below fluid line. Ensure there is a valve installed between the pump inlet and the tank to protect the pump from inlet fluid pressure exceeding 10 PSIG. Submersible, when the pump is installed inside the tank. Ensure that the air exhaust is piped to the atmosphere prior to a submerged installation. Every pump location should have an air line large enough to supply the volume of air necessary to achieve the desired flow rate. The air should be dry and free from debris to prevent damaging the pump's air valve. For best results, the installation should use a 5 micron air filter, air valve and pressure regulator. The air filter will help eliminate potential pipeline contaminants. Do not exceed the pump's maximum operating pressure of 120 PSIG, 8.3 bar. For applications where the effects of pulsation should be reduced, a pulsation dampener can be installed on the discharge side of the pump to help provide a smoother discharge flow. This function is critical in applications that need to minimize system vibration to protect and enhance the accuracy of downstream instrumentation. It also extends equipment life by reducing the load on the pump. The mounting feet can also be used to minimize vibration. Pressure gauges are recommended on both the inlet or suction side of the pump and the discharge side of the pump to confirm pressure. Pressure gauges can assist with any required troubleshooting and can be used to monitor the pump's performance. An isolation valve is recommended to further protect the pressure gauge. For applications that handle flammable fluids and or wherever static electricity is a hazard, the pump, as well as the surrounding equipment, must be properly grounded. To ground the pump, loosen the grounding screw and install a grounding wire. Tighten the grounding screw. The wire should be a 12-gauge wire or larger. Connect the other end of the wire to a true earth ground. The equipment must be grounded to achieve ATEX rating displayed on the pump's tag. It is recommended to configure the pump with the grounding lug option. For metering and dispensing applications, some all-flow pumps can be configured with a solenoid pulse control that integrates the pump with external controls, such as an industrial PLC. This provides speed and flow rate control of the pump which is crucial for dispensing and dosing applications. When you're ready to start the pump, either for the first time or after service, All Flow recommends doing it slowly and letting the pump ease into the desired flow rate and performance. This reduces the load on the pump, extending the life of the equipment and components. 
It is also recommended to inspect and tighten the fasteners to the proper torque values every three months. You should periodically perform a visual inspection until a service schedule is created. For more information on how to properly install your AllFlow AODD pump, be sure to review the pump's manual at psgdover.com 